So the Apple Pencil 2 was released back in 2018 alongside the redesigned 2018 iPad Pro. And it's been about four years and it's remained at that $130 price point. But just as iPad OS has evolved to what it is today, the Apple Pencil 2 has evolved right alongside it and now has some amazing features that I bet you a lot of you guys really don't know about quite yet. So even though from a hardware standpoint, the Apple Pencil 2 hasn't really changed at all, from a software standpoint, it's made some great strides and now is a must have if you do buy yourself an iPad Pro, an iPad Air, or even now an iPad Mini. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over the Apple Pencil 2 and all of its must-know features and some hidden features that you guys might not know about. But without further ado, let's talk about it. So before we get into the actual features of the Apple Pencil 2, I wanna go over two quick things. The first one is that yes, retail price from the Apple Store, this thing is $130, but you can always find deals on Amazon, on Best Buy for at least and I mean at least $10 off, if not more. I've seen this as low as $99 on Amazon, and I'll put some updated links in the description if you guys do wanna pick one up at not that $130 price point. So I highly, highly recommend avoiding the Apple tax by getting it at full price. And secondly, I do wanna go over the settings menu first of the Apple Pencil 2. So go into your settings menu, go into the Apple Pencil section, and then you get to see exactly how much you can customize it natively through the settings application. Now there isn't too much to customize to begin with, but there are two main things that I do wanna bring up. The first one is a double tap feature. So by default, if you double tap on the Apple Pencil, it's gonna change between your main pen tip of choice, the actual writing tip, and then the eraser tool. But you can actually make it so it changes in between your two most used tips, so you can change it to actually turn it off completely you can even make that double tap feature to show the color palette and things like that. I do wish that Apple added a little bit more customization to the hardware itself. Maybe a triple tap to bring up some other menu or maybe use it so you can actually click and take a fo photo from a distance with the iPad Pro. But again, Apple's just giving us that double tap shortcut to go from eraser to main tip, but you can customize that as you see fit. And then at the bottom of the settings, you now have the feature which came in iPadOS 14, I believe, to actually take a screenshot when dragging from the bottom right or the bottom left. And then in iPadOS 15, we got the ability to take quick notes. Now, a lot of people have asked me in the comments and on my Twitter, if those features went away now that Stage Manager has been introduced with iPadOS 16, but rest assured that with Stage Manager turned on and even turned off, those two actions still work. So for me, I have it set up so bottom right takes a screenshot and bottom left brings up the quick note feature, which I actually use a decent amount. But now that we've got those housekeeping things out of the way, let's go into the actual features of the Apple Pencil. And some of these things, you know, they were relatively new to me up until six months ago. So I figured I'd share this with everybody. The first thing I do wanna talk about is how the Apple Pencil works within text. Now for this video and for these demos, I am gonna be using the Apple Notes application. So some of the things might be a little bit different for your note-taking app of choice, but they are universal for the most part and they're built in natively into the OS. So some of these things will work universally throughout all applications. But the way that it works with text is actually a little bit more than just transforming written hand notes into actual computer text. There's a lot more that goes into it. So of course, we'll start with Scribble itself. So Scribble came with iPadOS 15 and it was Apple's way of using handwritten notes with the Apple Pencil and turning it into computer text. And the way to access this, at least in the notes application, is by going into the Apple Pencil notes toolbox or whatever you guys wanna call that thing exactly. But there's a little pencil in there that when you have an Apple Pencil, it's gonna have a little A on there. That little A, I don't know exactly what it stands for, but it does automate, so maybe that's what it's for going from handwritten text to computer text. So anything that you write, so as you can see, I'm demoing it right now, immediately when you're done with that word or when Apple or the OS recognize that it's a complete word, it's gonna move it right to the top of the screen and turn it into computer text for you. Now this is where things get a little bit more in depth. So next, after you're done writing whatever you wanna write, or if you have a bunch of notes that are already typed out for you and you wanna edit them with your Apple Pencil, if you wanna highlight a certain portion of text, you can either circle whatever text you wanna highlight or run a line directly through that text and it'll automatically highlight and then bring up the shortcuts menu. So you can cut it, you can copy it, you can delete it, you can do whatever you see fit. It's just like using your mouse to highlight a certain portion of text, but you can do it with your Apple Pencil, which I thought was very cool. Another interesting one is the ability to add and remove spaces with the Apple Pencil. So if you have two words with a space in between them and you wanna bring them together, you just draw a little line in between them and then those words will attach to each other. And then the same thing goes when you have a word and you wanna split into two words, you just draw a line in between two letters and it's gonna add a space right in there for you. Another super useful feature with the actual Apple Pencil and computer text is if you wanna delete sections or words or even letters from whatever text you have on there, all you have to do is scribble it out. And what's amazing is that iPad OS and the Apple Pencil will know and be able to distinct between maybe doing a one line cross, which is to highlight text, but then also if you wanna scribble text out, it's kind of a native and a very familiar motion. So once you scratch it out, it'll just delete that text for you and you can see it highlight as you're scratching it out to make sure that that's the text that you do wanna actually delete. 
And then lastly, let's say you're editing a long, you know, computer text document and you, you want to add a couple thoughts into it. All you have to do is with your Apple Pencil, just press and hold within a space and you'll see this kind of grayed out section that allows you to actually handwrite whatever text you want to input into there. And then that's where Scribble takes over and it turns that handwritten text into actual computer text. And then once you're done with it, you let go, give it about three seconds and then everything kind of comes back together and then your added text is right then and there. So one of my favorite things about Apple Notes and honestly, just that little toolbar at the bottom is the ruler. Now, I feel like this doesn't get talked about nearly enough, but that ruler is absolutely amazing. So all you have to do to activate that ruler is tap it once. Then you're gonna see kind of a transparent ruler that shows up right on your screen. And with two fingers, you can move it to whatever angle you want. You can move it up and down. You can move it to any part of the screen, as far off of the screen or as right into the middle of the screen as you want. And then the OS knows that, let's say you wanna draw a perfectly straight line. All you have to do is grab your Apple Pencil alongside that ruler and start drawing a line. And it's gonna know that you're trying to draw a perfectly straight line. And then not only does it tell you the angle that you're at on the ruler, but as you're actually drawing with the Apple Pencil, it'll tell you how many pixels deep or how long in terms of pixels that line is gonna be. So if you have something that needs to be a certain length in terms of pixels, by all means, natively Apple will tell you in real time. And this is a perfect segue because since we're talking about precise lines, we actually have the ability to draw precise shapes. So I know a lot of us can't draw a perfect circle or a perfect square or a rectangle or any of those geometric shapes or let alone a star. So what you can do with the Apple Notes app and pretty much with any application, at least any native application is after you're done drawing that circle, do not lift your Apple Pencil from the screen because if you hold both ends, then it's gonna automatically give you a perfect circle. Same thing goes with triangles, squares, rectangles, star shapes, right triangles, different shape triangles. So it's gonna give you the straightest line possible to mimic that shape that you're trying to do. So again, it does work with stars as well. So that's a beautiful thing to have. And then let's say that you have too many shapes in one section and you wanna throw one of those shapes into that section of shapes. All you have to use is that spiral pen that's inside of that toolbar. And that allows you to actually circle a certain shape and then move it around and resize it. And I'm actually gonna show you how this can be used, especially with handwritten text. But for this shape purposes, all you have to do is circle it with that spiral pen, move it around, and then it's gonna stay put to whatever section of the notes application you wanna leave it in. So now you can see that we actually have some handwritten notes right here. So we have an email address, a phone number, you know, a meeting to be scheduled, an address that's right there. So with that same pencil tip or that spiral pencil tip tool, all you have to do is circle a certain section for it to be highlighted. And then you can actually turn that handwritten text into physical text or computer text. But then also there's some shortcuts. So for instance, with that one that has a meeting at 9 p.m., it'll actually open up a calendar shortcut for you. Or with that phone number, it'll actually open up, you know, audio FaceTime for you to call that person. And it works even better on an iPhone that has an actual SIM card because it'll actually make that phone call for you. Same thing goes with the email address. If you just want to send an immediate email or an email shortcut, just long press on there and then it's going to send you right into the mail app of your choice to send an email to that specific email. Don't try to send me an email because these are all fake numbers and fake emails. But I thought that was a great tool because Apple intuitively knows like, hey, you took this note down for a reason. You probably wanna save that onto your calendar. You probably wanna send an email to this person you just met, or you probably wanna make a phone call to that number that you just wrote down to make reservations for a certain you know, restaurant or something like that. So I think these are beautiful tools and they're very intuitive and they just make sense. And then another nice little nuance thing is like, let's say you are writing down that email, or let's say you are drawing a shape and you don't like how it came out. You can actually use your gestures, so three finger gestures to undo and redo, which is something that I learned very recently. So if you swipe to the left with three fingers, it's gonna undo, and if you swipe to the right with three fingers, it's gonna redo that. So yes, we do have the buttons that are physically there for you to press, but why not add a little gesture in there to make your life a little bit easier and a little bit quicker? Another great implementation of the Notes application in the Apple Pencil 2 is inside of the Mail application. So let's say you have an email that came in and you wanna draw something out because you just can't type it. it, it would take way too long to type. You'd rather draw a picture because a picture speaks way louder than words. So all you have to do is on the top right corner of the virtual keyboard, you just press that little button and it brings you basically a view into the notes application and everything that works in the notes application will work on this canvas. And then once you're done with that, all you have to do is insert into the actual email and it's gonna add just like an image, like an image attachment right into the email and everything that you drew is gonna be perfectly right into that email. So that's, I think that's a great implementation to be able to add that directly into an email without having to maybe go to an application, take a screenshot of it, upload it as an attachment. This is all done seamlessly inside of the actual application. And then another quick feature that I wanted to talk about was if your iPad is locked and your screen is totally blacked out, and you have your Apple Pencil, all you have to do to take a quick note with the Apple Pencil itself is just tap on the black screen and then you're gonna be brought right into the Apple Notes application. You don't need to be signed in, you don't have to be unlocked or anything like that. Now to re-access that, you will have to unlock the device, but if you do wanna take a really quick note down, I think this is an amazing feature. 
And now this final feature that I wanna bring up is probably my favorite and probably the coolest feature that happens with the Apple Pencil and with your iPad and with the Notes app and things like that. So you're gonna need two things for this to work. You're gonna to have to be on the same Wi-Fi network with your Mac OS computer and your iPad, and you have to be signed into the same iCloud account. So what's so amazing about this feature is, let's say that I take a screenshot on my computer and I wanna draw it up, but you know, I don't wanna draw it with my mouse, I wanna draw it up precisely with my Apple Pencil. So after I take a screenshot on my computer, it's gonna do one of two things. It'll either automatically push it directly to your iPad, or if you've never done it before, you're gonna have to do it manually the first time. There's a little drop down menu in the top right hand corner of that screenshot to let you edit it on the actual iPad itself. So once you do that, it'll get shot to your iPad and you can draw on that image, on that screenshot in real time and you can see it update on your Mac. Once you're done, you press done and then it's gonna be a file that's gonna be on your Mac computer. So it's not gonna be on your iPad, it's not gonna be on your iPhone, it's gonna be still on your Mac. You're just using your Apple Pencil on your iPad to edit that document. And this isn't just for screenshots, this works with PDF documents. So if you have a PDF document that's emailed to you and that little button appears, and let's say you need to handwrite a signature or maybe drop down some notes on that PDF document, but you still wanna have it on your computer, it'll go from your computer to your iPad magically. That's a beautiful thing about the wall garden. You can edit it on your iPad and then it'll stay on your Mac computer. And it's not gonna take up any storage on your iPad. It's not gonna be anywhere on your iPad. It's gonna be on the computer itself, which I think is a magical feature of the iPad and Mac OS. But that is gonna do for this video, everybody. I just wanted to highlight some of the power that you get out of the Apple Pencil 2, because yes, it's been around for four years, and I really highly doubt that Apple's gonna iterate on this again. You know, I don't know if we're gonna get an Apple Pencil 3, maybe we will, but I highly doubt that even with a new iPad Pro that's gonna be releasing probably at the end of this year, we're not gonna get a new one. So I figured, let me show off some of these features that I've learned over the past few years, because a lot of them help your productivity. And my favorite one by far, has to be that implementation of being able to take a screenshot on your Mac computer, editing it on your iPad, and then having it back on your Mac computer with zero lag, zero issues whatsoever. It's just, again, the power of the wall garden of Apple's ecosystem. But leave some comments down below if you guys know any other tips and tricks of the Apple Pencil 2. I'm always all ears. There's probably a couple other ones that I missed out, but these are the main ones that I wanted to show off. But if you guys did make it to the end of the video, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the end. And like I said, leave a comment if you guys learned something new. Let me know which one of these features you've never heard about, if any. And that's gonna do for this video, everybody. So if you guys wanna check out some more content on iPadOS, iOS, or macOS, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace.